Hi everyone, so welcome to one more fantastic 5 MCQs discussion for NEET PG bar FMG and uh, let us start with the first MCQ a female with unilateral breast cancer is on tamoxifen therapy so what is tamoxifen first of all it is serum serum means selective estrogen receptor modulator so they are asking which of the following adverse effect is associated with the use of tamoxifen they are asking which is the adverse effect of tamoxifen Option A, carcinoma in opposite breast. Option B, endometrial carcinoma. Ovarian carcinoma. Chronic myelin leukemia. So, try to answer this. Yes, if you are telling option B, endometrial carcinoma, you are correct. So, let us see why it is the answer. What is tamoxifen? I told you. Tamoxifen is a selective estrogen receptor modulator, meaning in certain receptor estrogen receptor it acts as agonist or partial agonist in certain places it acts as an antagonist uterus it acts as an agonist so it can lead to endometrial cancer or uterine cancer because estrogen is stimulated in the liver it increases clotting factors and it can lead to venous thromboembolism and in the bone it decreases resorption of the bone that means it is good for bone it re decreases bone resorption. So two adverse effect is seen when we give tamoxifen. Increase the risk of uterine cancer. Second, increase risk of venous thromboembolism. But the good thing is it can prevent osteoporosis. Coming to the breast tissue, it has an antagonist. So it will block the estrogen effect on the breast. That's why it is used for breast cancer. So it is used for both male and female breast cancer. Also, it is used for both pre and post menopausal breast cancer. In the peripheral tissue, also it blocks the estrogen action. So it is going to cause hot flush. So patient will experience hot flush because of estrogen deficiency in the periphery. So three adverse effects we can expect from tamoxifen is uterine cancer, venous thromboembolism, and hot flushes. Two advantage we can see here is the effect in osteoporosis decreases osteoporosis and it can be used to treat breast cancer so with that let us move back so it will not cause carcinoma in opposite breast because it is an estrogen antagonist so it will cause endometrial cancer nothing to do with ovarian cancer and cml so the answer is b so we have one more serum called roloxifen Roloxifen is mainly used to manage postmenopausal postmenopausal osteoporosis. And also in people with high risk of breast cancer, it is also used to prevent breast cancer in high risk individuals. Suppose they had family history and everything, so there we can use the drug Roloxifen. It is also serum. Moving on to the second question, a patient was put on metoprolol. So, what is metoprolol? Anything ending with lol is a beta blocker. Okay. Is it cardioselective or not? Yes, it's a cardioselective beta blocker. It was given for what problem? Hypertension. Patient was also administered verapamil. So, they have given verapamil. Now, what is verapamil? Verapamil is a calcium channel blocker. We call it as non dihydropyridine non-DHP. So the question is, which of the following is likely to happen with Ambo combination? So they are asking if we use beta blocker with verapamil, what can happen? Please remember, both can act on the heart. So tell me what will be the problem? Will they cause torsidis pontis? No. Will they cause tachycardia? No. Will they cause ventral fibrillation? No. Then what do they do? They cause bradycardia with AV block. Why? Because beta blockers act on the heart and decrease the heart rate, decrease conduction, and decrease force of contraction. So if you block beta in the heart, beta 1, you see bradycardia, heart block, and decrease in force of contraction. Varapamil also acts on the heart and it also suppresses heart rate, conduction, and force of contraction. So if I use them together, patient will have severe bradycardia and severe heart block. The other things are not seen. So like this, drug interactions are frequently tested. Now let me also discuss some of the drug interactions here. 
can we use nitrate and silver fill together no what happens the combination will lead to severe fall in blood pressure severe hypotension so don't give it can we add indomethacin and ac inhibitor i have asked this already in discussions no because indomethacin blunts that is reduce the antihypertensive effect of ac inhibitor the antihypertensive effect of the drug is reduced not only that it both the combination will increase potassium levels can we get digoxin and clarithromycin no because clarithromycin inhibit p glycoprotein and because of that there is increase in digoxin level you know digoxin is narrow therapeutic index a bit of increase in levels can cause toxicity so these interactions are very very important so don't give them together i have told you the reasons moving on to the third question all the following are advantages of entry coated tablet except all the advantages of entry coated tablets except option one it increases the half life of the drug let us check second it protects acid labile drugs from gastric ph it increases absorption of the drug that are preferably absorbed distal to stomach it protects stomach from irritant drugs right so what is the answer let us see that now what happens when we give a drug this is the esophagus stomach sometimes when you give the drug the drug will enter inside and when there is a drug inside there is acidic ph now this acidic ph may destroy the drug or inactivate the drug so if i do the entry coating of the drug the acidic ph cannot do anything to the drug so the drug can enter the drug can enter the intestine and then release and then get absorbed so point number one entry coating will prevent the acid destruction of the drug sometimes drugs may be irritant to the stomach so irritant effect can also be brought down by this method if you are entry coating so let us read the option again it increases the half-life of the drug no because half-life will be seen once the drug is already absorbed entry coating is going to help in absorption it protect the acid labile drugs from uh, gastric ph i told you that is why proton pump inhibitors are entry coated to prevent the destruction from acid it increases the absorption of drugs that are preferentially absorbed distal to stomach yes that's why i told you if the drug are not absorbed in stomach they can be absorbed more in the intestine so that is going to help it protects stomach from irritant drugs yes correct if a drug is highly irritant give the entry coating so stomach is not irritated that will go to the intestine and gets absorbed so the answer will be it increases half of the half life of the drug is not seen because what you see half life is after the absorption of the drug when it goes to system circulation suppose the drug is 100 to become 50 it takes one hour then the half life will be one hour so this is later stage so entry coating is only here it will affect the drug absorption so uh, let me repeat it will prevent the acid destruction it will decrease the irritant effect in the stomach it will help the drug to get absorbed more in the intestine so that is the purpose of entry coating okay coming to the question number four a 70 year old patient with diabetes and hypertension he presents with late stage kidney disease chronic kidney which of the following anti-diabetic drug require least dose modification renal disease so this is a very commonly asked question because patient is having diabetes patient is having hypertension and patient is having chronic kidney disease or late stage kidney disease now please understand if there is late stage kidney disease the drug metformin is absolutely contraindicated you all know that then we can give other drugs the other drugs in the options are gliptins so any drug ending with gliptin what are those they are dpp4 inhibitors now what is the role of dpp4 let me tell you there are certain substances called incretins called glp1 and gip so glp1 stands for glucose glucagon like peptide one glucose dependent isotropic polypeptide these are incretins these are made inactive by the enzyme dipeptidyl peptidase 4 so this enzyme is 
who are going to make it inactive so these two are in creatines very good in diabetics because they decrease glucagon slow gastric emptying and stimulate satiety so what the scientists did this they inhibited this dp4 so what levels increases these two level increases and they are going to be helpful in diabetics so these are gliptins so the question is asking which is safer now the safest one is option c linagliptin because linagliptin undergoes bile elimination so it undergoes bile elimination and enter hepatic recycling so it doesn't depend on the kidney to go out so because of that there is no need of dose reduction in case of linagliptin and it has been tested twice now they can also ask you about a drug called saxagliptin saxagliptin has shown to increase the risk of heart failure so most of the studies have shown that it increases the risk of heart failure this can be tested in the future so the answer for this question is c linagliptin remember in a renal failure lena ko lena hai lena linagliptin linagliptin the last question will be combined oral contraceptive pills act all the following mechanism except so if you can answer pause the video and answer now whenever we give contraceptive pills contraceptives what is the mechanism of contraceptives so we have three types the combined contraceptive pill then progesterone only pill and then emergency contraceptive so all of them have this mechanism so what do they do first of all they can inhibit ovulation second they decrease tubal motility so if the fallopian tube is not moving fertilization will not occur then they can stop the implantation they can interfere with implantation and one more thing they can make the cervical mucus thick so these are the mechanisms how the contraceptives work all of them have the same mechanisms but remember combined ocps mainly have inhibiting ovulation decreasing tubal motility then progesterone only pill that is the second one they are going to cause cervical mucus thickening so the sperm will not penetrate third emergency contraceptive they prevent implantation but all these have all the mechanisms so the question is asking which is not a mechanism inhibit implantation by bringing change in the uterus true i just told you they will not allow the implantation they inhibit ovulation true they make the cervical mucus thick and hostile to the sperm true increase gonadotropin secretion no now if they increase gonadotropin that is fsh lh then what happens lh will increase ovulation no ovulation will lead to fertility she will become pregnant so this is not a mechanism so the answer is d for this so we understood the mechanisms here so certain questions for you at the end of the video can you tell me diabetic drugs approved for obesity also there are three drugs please tell me can you tell me an anti angel drug which inhibit funny sodium channel can you tell me what happens if you combine ocps with rifampicin what is the drug interaction so these are the three questions you need to answer here so hope you found the content useful so put the like button subscribe the channel and share to your friends for further updates thank you all take care